Hey guys. Welcome back to day two with Ron Gibbons. Um, it's going to be super exciting today because today we're going to be packaging all the, um, all the graphics that we've done yesterday into mock-ups and we're going to be creating a presentation for the client, right? Yep. So it's going to be uh, super fun and in about 30 minutes you guys can win some super cool sticker mule stickers uh, with a chat and win. And in about 90 minutes, we're gonna be reviewing your daily creative challenge submissions. So make sure to submit on our um, uh, Behance site, behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Here you can participate in the community chat as well. And um, yeah, you can just check out the um, today's challenge is to add text to an image. Um, so we're looking forward to your submissions and we're going to be reviewing them in about 90 minutes. So yeah, stay tuned for that. All right. Ron, where did we stop yesterday? Let's um, look at your Macaroni Creative uh, Instagram real quick <laughs> before we, we continue the work. Um, yeah, so guys, um, this is Ron's uh, company, Macaroni Creative. Yep. Make sure to follow on Instagram and um, also on Behance. Um, yeah, this looks awesome. Yeah, Love check it. Check it all out. Check it out. Make sure to follow. And then let's see where we stopped yesterday. Cool. So yesterday we went and designed this packaging design for uh, Chart Apple, which is like a hard cider company. Uh, up in upstate New York. Um, so today we're going to go and take this packaging design that we went and did and put it into a presentation that we'd send to the client. So we're going to go and do some additional mock-ups to kind of show how the brand can expand um, as well as lay this out, kind of show what color palette we use, the typography and all that good stuff so we can have a nice successful round one and it really gives the client an idea of how this brand could expand and be theirs. Yeah, awesome. I think those colors came out super nice. Yeah, definitely. And welcome to everyone in the chat. Uh, make sure to ask questions if you have any. We're going to try our best to answer all of them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and share our knowledge. Um, yeah, welcome to everybody. Welcome to Michelle, Valdeir, uh, Lyle, Tim, Rajesh. Welcome, everyone. So good to have you here. Yep, excited to be on again. <laughs> all right, so I guess we can start diving into it. Yeah, let's do that. All right, cool. Um, so if we go over here. I'm going to use a little InDesign today, give you guys a little preview of what we usually go and do for um, a packaging presentation. So right now we're just doing one option. Typically we go and have probably two to three, once in a while four, depending on what package the client picked uh, when we put the proposal over. We typically give them a couple options for you know the package that we provide and that varies in amount of options that we give them, amounts of revisions, um, you know, depending on the timeline, that all affects like prices from there. Um, but for the sake of this, we're just going to go and do one option. But we usually start off with a nice title page and then break it down to the options. Um, and then we'll start dropping things in here. Um, we usually give like a little description, even though we also like to go and present these live. Um, so this is going to be our presentation template here. And we have it all laid out already, uh, set to go. So you have your breaker slides so they can kind of keep track of everything. And then we'll start inserting things into here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is dive over back into Photoshop and, you know, we need the packaging that we had from yesterday. So um, typically I go and just export um, a PNG of it so then we can use it in some of our mockups that we're doing as well as go and drop it into the presentation. Um, so for presentation purposes, you can just go and save it for web. Um, there's like a little bit of a bigger file, so it might go and take a second to go and mm. load up there, but command option shift. Um, as a safer web. So a mm -hmm. bunch of buttons, but once you go and get it in there, <laughs> then it goes and speeds up your workflow a little bit. Yeah. Saving for web saves it in RGB, right? Yep, RGB. So, so then typically we send interactive PDFs, which is RGB. Um, it's a little bit smaller, easier to email, but you still get decent quality from it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool, so export that. Go over into here. Yeah, I think it's really interesting for many of people that are watching today to see how actually, uh, you know, work get, is getting presented because um, it's not actually something that uh, you would necessarily learn in school. Um, they will they will teach you your your tools and and so on, but uh, communicating with a client is a whole different thing, right? Exactly. 
And you so. know, a big thing with it too is that took a while to learn. Like once I, you know, started yeah. doing it for real, my presentations at the beginning were a lot uh, simpler than yeah. they are now. And you know, I think that's a big difference when you go in and present to a client. Yeah. Um, the presentation to start off with. Cool. So we have all that all saved in there. Um, go over to InDesign. And since this uh, project is going to be primarily packaging, usually we start off with a package design. So if we go and have one that's more branding focused that mm -hmm. maybe doesn't have a package with it, then we'll go and start off maybe with logos or things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, it really depends on the main purpose of the client uh, project. So I can just go in here. First things first. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Welcome, Zurian. Anna. Anna says uh, she was gone for a couple of days, but now she's back. <laughs> hey, welcome. Welcome back. So let's scale this guy down over here. <laughs> Tima is saying all layers are named and color coded. Where did you find this magical unicorn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Nice Ron. and organized. We are very glad to have you here. So put that in there so they go and get the impact like right away. Mm -hmm. um, and then later we'll come up with a little description. Right now we just have placeholder text there, but usually we like to give a description because typically we go and present these to the client and we'll talk mm -hmm. through it with them and everything like that. But a lot of times they have to bring in and show other people or you know they might be like higher ups or stakeholders or things like that. Um, so it's always good to still have a description in there and um, you know have something they can reference back or mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it can be overwhelming when you're showing them a bunch of options, so it's always nice to have that information the client can back uh, track to mm -hmm. and then really just get the information from it. Are you using master pages for your InDesign file, presentation um, file? This one doesn't have them because we go and switch out like the mm -hmm. uh, okay. title in here. Sometimes we'll go and have like a footer in here, so if we were to have a footer, we'd probably go and put master pages mm -hmm. in there. Um, but this one just has like this top section that we'll go and change. So. You typically we go like option one and then uh, like can design or something like that. Um, and this will stay consistent throughout. And then it allows you to edit it on each page if it's not on the master mm. pages. Um, so we'll start off like that. And then we're also going to go and start doing some mock-ups here too. Um, so you can go and do those like a number of ways. There's mock-ups that are pre-made already where you can just go and drop your design in and they're all set like that. You can mm -hmm. also create your own. Um, using something like Adobe Stock where they have nice uh, mock-ups kind of set for you that are white, but then you just have to kind of, you know, put your graphics on top of it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and then another option is you can go and just create it from scratch. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll go and show like a landing page uh, to our clients because most people need a website eventually. So we'll just go yeah. and kind of show like a hero image or something like that. And we typically mm -hmm. just make that mock-up ourselves. Um, so we'll kind of go through those different processes. Um, and you can just go and see how it can be done all in all. Hi, Audi. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Noor. Hi, Rodrigo. <laughs> Welcome to the chat. Hey. Welcome. Cool. So we'll go into some of the mock-ups. Like I was saying, uh, first we'll dive into one where um, it's just pre-made for us. Um, so there's like a bunch of different sites that you can get this off of. Um, you know, if you just search the internet for mock-ups, mm -hmm. um, you can find them in a different bunch of different places. Um, and we're gonna be doing business cards. So we'll go over to the Illustrator um, and kind of have like a similar process as yesterday where we go and uh, you know, size it out first and then we'll drop it into the smart objects so then it can easily just be uploaded and switch yeah. right into there. Very smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. business cards are typically three and a half by two. Um, and we'll be working with in there. We can make these a little bit bigger if we want to, just mm -hmm. to go and scale since we're not using artboards and we have some big files going here, so we want to keep everything easy to go and reference um, and hop back and forth to. Mm -hmm. um, and then typically we'll go and use brand colors for it, so it's always nice to go and keep things consistent. I mean, you could go and do white or something, but since we have this nice light color here, we could probably go and use that for one side. Um, and we want to keep our typography uh, consistent throughout, so we'll go and be using the same typefaces that we used up mm -hmm. here on the packaging design. Awesome. And I see there's a bunch of uh, different countries here. Portugal is in the house, Brazil is in the house. It's awesome to have you here. Stick on the Apple theme. Go and use a name like that. And since we're using uppercase throughout the packaging, we'll probably stick to that as our H1 over here. Just bring that to the front. 
Command Shift, right bracket brings it all the way to the front for a nice key command. Scale this guy down like a little bit. As we were saying yesterday too, we kind of have some different type styles going on here. Mm -hmm. We'll probably have to go and find a body font that we want to use throughout, because right here we're just using one uh, mm -hmm. based on like the hierarchy with the type sizes. But you know, once you start getting into different mockups and applications, you'll probably want another body font to go and you know round everything out. Mm -hmm. Um, we're also using this italicized version down here, which we ended up going and skewing because uh, the typeface that we're using right now doesn't have an italics version of it um, with like the, the trial license. Um, and as I was saying yesterday, a lot of times we'll use like a trial license to start off when we're doing a presentation and then if the um, you know client goes and buys into it, then we'll actually purchase the typefaces. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not going and spending a ton of money on things that aren't So right being now used. we're creating our own uh, italic version. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Cool. I love sans serifs. It's yeah, just, me too. Um, nice and clean, slick. Yeah. And you can easily use like the alignment tools up here that you have, left align, center, right align, um, to make sure that everything's nice and organized. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Nick is saying, um, you watched a bit yesterday. Great, great color palette, Ron. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Let us know where you're from in the chat. I want to see some Germans out here or Ukrainians. <laughs> <laughs> represent. So right now I'll just go and kind of plug in all the information in just a basic typeface just to get it all in there before we can uh, start messing around with some body types and things like that. I don't know how about you, but when a client sends me a, a file that, that includes a lot of text, I usually try and make them send me a file where I can just copy paste the text. Mm -hmm. That's so I don't idea. have to type it all. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, um, when you're typing things, it's easy to make uh, type typo, type mistakes. Exactly. So. Yeah, it's always going. It's always good to go and get it from the client if possible. Just makes your life a little bit easier. Ah, oh, Tim is watching from Germany right right now. Oh, awesome! Awesome. I was almost thinking Tim was from Germany because of his last name, Tim Möbist. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Next from Ontario, California. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love California. Yeah, I feel me like too. a California girl. <laughs> <laughs> After two years here. Yeah, I studied in Hanover. Hochschule Hannover. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so now we can start diving in and looking for some body type in here. Mm -hmm. Usually I'd like to move it over a little bit so I can still see what's going on. They have a little preview on the side over here, but it's nice to actually see it in action. Um, cool, so we want something that has lower and uppercase, so it could be nice and readable. Probably not something as condensed mm -hmm. as what we're using for the headers, because mm -hmm. when yeah. you get large body text like that, as you can see here, it's it a little bit hard to read. Yeah. Uh, so I'll probably want to branch off and find something else that's nice. Um, mm -hmm. And also you can go to Adobe Fonts too to find some other stuff that's loaded up if you don't have anything in your current library that you feel works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, if you click on the filter tool, you can uh, type, you can select the type of uh, typeface you want to look for. Yep, that's awesome right and there. And if you click on find more, you can even uh, see, you can even see typefaces that you don't have in your library yet, but that are available for free. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't even know you could go and do that right yeah. from there. Usually I always switch back and forth and, and find some different stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, and the cool thing is also um, that you can see the typeface actually, you know, being an used. example being used. Yeah, usually it's very difficult to find typefaces if you don't know how they actually look like, so. Yeah, exactly. It's like a thing that Adobe has been working on. Yeah, those are some really cool tips. And we have a chat and win in 15 minutes. 100 die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Nice, gotta get more of those stickers. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love stickers. As I yeah. said yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was saying, I usually go and load my notebooks up and I usually can't see any of the notebook after it, uh -huh. but just all random ones I get from conferences or hopping in different places and things like that. Mm -hmm. 
Shahid is from Pakistan. Welcome. And then we have some Ukrainians here. Nice. Maxim Malevsky, welcome from Odessa. New Zealand, New Zealand in the house. Steve, welcome to the chat. Welcome to Adobe Life. So right now I'm thinking maybe going using this one called Croston. The thing I like about it, it's got like a little bit of these rounded corners in here to kind of go and bring in some of that, you know, rounded softness that we went and put into the logo. Like if we mm -hmm. hop back over to here. Um, Yeah. Inside here, there's that little bit of roughness that we went and put in earlier. Um, so we can kind of play off of that where it's like a little bit soft and brings in that kind of old textures. Um, and then we also had our mood board here where, you know, things are a bit uh, worn out. You mm -hmm. know, they have some nice yeah. roundness in there. So it also contrasts some of the hard serifs that we have like inside the logo type. Mm -hmm. Victoria Pusyankova is saying hi everyone. Hi Victoria. Good to have you here. Awesome. Yep, and we, since here we were just using a limited color palette as we were explaining yesterday to kind of keep that vintage look going, um, we're just gonna go and use that. You know, we can go and use a left align look right here. Um, the can's also center aligned, so it might be nice. You could even switch it up and do something that's vertical. I like to go and mess around with a couple different type layouts that we have here. Mm -hmm. It might be nice to go and work this apple in here onto the one side, and maybe the other side has like the logo type in it. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. But you know, kind of just quickly oh, get some yeah. ideas out there. So this could be over here that's in the left-hand cool. corner if we want. You know, do something like that to give a little accent of the brand. Mm -hmm. And also here too, you kind of want to have the alignment. So you can Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's a name that fits perfectly in this company. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was born to go and uh, make apple cider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. So we have like one option there. I've been kind of liking the, the vertical business cards lately. I think it's like a nice touch. That's like a little bit different. So we can mess yeah. around with some stuff uh -huh. like that too. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Anthony's saying, hello everyone. I miss you all a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you here. I think that's a little big too, so maybe bring that guy down a little bit. So we have that there. This one, maybe we mess around with going and actually putting like the whole logo on top of it. Oh yeah, because we have the space. Exactly. And it kind of fits like nicely vertically in there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I actually like that a lot. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, something like that's kind of nice. Bring it up to And the also point. the vertical card kind of reminds of the can a little bit. Exactly, it has that nice association with mm -hmm. it. And maybe we try out like something centered. Maybe we just kind of play around with what we were doing with the can and kind of create that like visual language that goes through um, everything there. So we have like a nice center design so we can just align everything like that. Bring this up. This is a little wide so I might drop his name onto, onto two lines. Oh yeah, that's way better. Gives a little space around the edges. Yeah, bring the letting in a little bit. I used to always go and get like tracking and letting and all that and kerning all confused, but the way you go and remember letting is because they used to put pieces of lead in between the word, or oh. the line spaces. So once I figured that out, that's kind of locked in my mind after that. Yeah, that makes sense. Give that like a little bit more room to breathe. This guy can be a little bit smaller if we need to. Anthony's saying he loves the Chart Apple logo. Uh, thanks a lot, Anthony. I love it too. It came out really good. <laughs> yeah, it's all coming together nice. This is probably the most fun part too. Once you start getting the packaging and you know all the uh, different mock-ups yeah, together, because yeah, then you yeah. really see it start coming to life. It's yeah, not like, just ah, like ah, okay, exactly. This works. Yep. So we have like something like this going. Cool. Too. And then maybe we could go and take this over here. 
We want to go and have like a darker backside to it. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. It would be nice to bring some contrast on the backside. Exactly, because then it's nice when you flip it over to go and get yeah. something different yeah. there. I also am a big fan of like the painted edges that they go and do on business cards oh, a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always like a nice touch for it too. Actually, I think True. I might bring, try to bring the square back a little since his name's on two lines and you know, you gotta think of it being like a little bit flexible. So, you know, we're using the box up here on this top one, but you know, names are a little bit longer for the most part. So we might not wanna put a box directly around his name. Maybe we go and use that element for, you know, something like the title that could be a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and still go and break up like the type a little bit. So it's not just one like line of um, mm -hmm. just different type that's hanging around everywhere. And it's also an element that we're using on the packaging, right? So. Exactly. So kind of making this stuff consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about consistency. Alexandra is asking, are you going to post, post what the client ends up picking in the end? This one's actually a, a self-made project. <laughs> so you're going to be picking what you exactly. like in the end. <laughs> so I'm improving this direction right here. So <laughs> You guys can also vote out. in the chat. Do you like option one or option two better? Yep, exactly. We got this. Do you like the horizontal or the vertical option? You're the client. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this a lot. Yeah, This color too. combination is just so, it just works so well. Yeah, it definitely gives you that sense of like a fresh apple. And then also with there, um, you know, since it's a little bit darker, it kind of brings in that charred feeling of it um, and the whole burning of Kingston concept that we had last time, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the vertical one. And yeah. I see in the chat, uh, everybody's saying vertical too. Just a couple, <laughs> yeah, vertical definitely yeah. is the leader at the moment. It's a little bit different and it's nice how it goes and represents the can um, as well. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking too. Exactly. May awesome. bring his name up a little bit. Oh, and you know what? Um, you know how the can had like gold on top mm -hmm. and at the bottom? That'd yeah, maybe you cool. can mix in like a little gold foil or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh yeah, or the edges could be gold. Oh, that'd be really nice actually. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Have to mix that in once we go and mock it up. Cool. So we're off to a good start with these. So then we'll kind of go into our mock up um, back in Photoshop. So there's like some smart objects here. So you just kind of click right into those guys. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll go over to my file and go and grab this guy. Turn it around. We fit in there. Oops. Just holding down shift. Mm -hmm. Forgot about that before. Now just option drag keeps it proportional yeah. instead of yeah. Uh, yeah. the yeah. old way, which I think is good in the long run for all the new designers yeah. who, who haven't had to option shift it out. Yeah, I agree. But there's also settings. If you don't like the setting, you can just adjust it. There is a an adjustment where you can exactly. just reset it to the old ones. Yeah, trying to go and uh, keep uh, go and teach myself how to go and use it that way. Move them with the times. It looks cool. I really like that. Yep, so it's nice because it just updates it onto all these different versions yeah. right here. Um, Amazing. And then we'll go back into this, grab our backside of it. Um, that's our other smart object. So then below it, there's just another one right here that you click into and kind of do the same thing. Just drag it over. Javier is saying foil is, is always worth the extra. I agree, definitely. Mm -hmm. It definitely always uh, has a, gives a good a, a impression if you give hand somebody a card that's like impressive. And exactly. Nice, right? Yeah, it has a little bit more to it. Cool. So right now we have a good layout. This uh, mock is pretty nice too. It also has like the edge colors and stuff like that. So we can go and work some of that stuff in as well. Mm -hmm. um, Chat and win in five minutes. Uh -oh. Yay. Get ready for it. Got to get some stickers. <laughs> <laughs> get them fingers ready for typing. Yeah. Cool. So maybe start working in like some of this goldish color that we're using oh. on the other one. Be a nice, nice. Little, little touch so you kind of have that oh, going yeah. on the edges. That's cool. Maybe a little bit darker. So let's That's click amazing. on there, 
copy our codes that we have going. Um, and also there's like your pile that you have here. They have it all mm. separately uh, mapped out. That's awesome. Oh yeah. So we went into mask. Oh, there we oh. go. <laughs> Wasn't sure what I clicked at first. Uh, cool. So we'll hop back in there and just get those guys gold. Ooh. That's interesting. Maybe a little darker. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. This one has like different lighting on yeah. top of it. So probably have to go and kind of skew that a little bit to mm -hmm. get it to be the right color that we oh, want yeah. it to be. So maybe something more like so, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More, maybe more into the orange. Yeah. Yeah, it's feeling a little green now. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that looks already like Something that. like that, it's pretty solid. Except I think the other ones are looking a little bit light now, a little yellowy. Mm -hmm. So I might want to hop down into those. Kind of put this color in there. And there we go, now it's feeling like cool. nice and consistent. So it's a little bit of like a burnt gold color. Wow, yeah, it really gives that um, industrial feeling, you know, like uh, exactly. <laughs> old industry. Then we can play with some background colors if we want to. Ooh. So we can go and use that. This is awesome. This is a great idea. Yeah, we can sample some of these other colors too if we decide we want to go and do it a different way. Usually the way I pick the background colors is depending on the other mock-ups we do. So yeah. you know, maybe if this one has you know the kind of burgundy background, uh -huh. then we'll go and use a gold one on the other one oh. or a lighter one on the other one. So then when we set it up on our presentation page, as you'll see, uh -huh. they all kind of have contrast from one another. Yeah. I kind of like the gold on this one. Yeah, me too. It really looks in so industrial. It really supports this, you know, um, crafty feel. Exactly, the whole nice craft look of everything. Yeah. Which is good. And it doesn't look very, uh, it looks very unusual to me. Like, I have, have rarely seen something like this, this color being used. I mean, yeah, it's a nice combination, like, yeah. throughout everything. Cool. I like that. So, we'll go and save that. And again, we're going to export this guy for web too, so then we can easily drop it in there. Mm -hmm. Probably don't need something that's 4,000, so we can go and bring it down to go and save some file size there. So you can just edit the image size right here, mm -hmm. um, and it scales it down nicely and proportionally for you. Mm -hmm. And then you can also go and change the file type in here. But since we have a background on this, a JPEG will work just fine. Mm -hmm. This mock-up, where did you get this from? Was it from uh, Smarty Mock-ups? I think this one was from Pixadin. Pixadin. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, people love that. Everybody's saying nice mock-up. Yeah, it's looking nice. Great. Yeah, we got some good stuff going here. Tim's saying Adobe Cadabra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is definitely true. Cool. So we have that all set up in there. Um, so we can hop over to InDesign too and start laying mm -hmm. out maybe our mock-up page. Typically we have a page that has all mock-ups inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can either place it in um, you can also go and make like a box like this. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, you can grab your image. Awesome. Brandon is saying greetings from Mexico. Greetings back to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> So then if you go and make a box prior to that, then you can just drop it inside there and it kind of keeps like the bounding for it. Um, then we can go and scale it down. So if you double click inside of there, you can go and edit the image. So if I just oh, went and clicked, that. if I this just click this, is so cool. it goes and edits the border right here. Yeah. So you can kind of see the size of your box that you're having. But if you double click and you get this kind of orangey line, the yeah, then you do the mm. picture. Um, 30 minutes until chat to win. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs> Cool. So I'm we have already this loving this so much. Yeah, it's like, looking nice. You can kind of see how it all starts coming together with the can there. You got your uh, business card, so you can see it as a full like living brand yeah. instead of just um, you know a logo. Mm -hmm. Juan is saying so cool color choices. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it was more of like a, a happy accident, right? Exactly. We, yeah. we were thinking about gold foil, and then this uh, uh, rusty color came. Uh, came into mind as well. Exactly. So yeah, that was great. Yeah, so that makes a nice rust color in there. Mm -hmm. And the gold foil might be a little bit too, uh, you know, upscale for this kind of craft look that we're yeah. doing and kind of the rough edges and mm -hmm. stuff that we used on the logo type. Yeah. So I think this is feeling nice. This is feeling really nice, yeah. Cool. 
So another one that we... All oh. right, we have a chat to win. So you guys just type away, just type anything you like into the chat and you can win 100 Sticker Mule stickers and we'll be right back. back with the fireworks Woo. chat and win type away type anything into the chat win the stickers type your favorite color type your favorite brand fruit. <laughs> type your favorite fruit apple or food, cider apple cider anything <laughs> <laughs> just get something in there yeah get them coming get them going <laughs> <laughs> all right and do we have a winner? Do we have a winner? The suspense is killing me. Yay. <laughs> and the winner is Ibrahim Esam. Congrats. Congratulations. You just won 100 die cut sticker mule stickers with free shipping. Have fun with it. And for all of you guys who haven't won, you still have the chance to order um, 10 die cut stickers for only one dollar and it's free shipping and all you have to do is go on stickermule.com slash adobe life 19 and yeah just order them from there and it's amazing one dollar yeah. nothing deal. to complain about Can't great deal <laughs> all right then um let's jump back into this wonderful presentation i'm really liking this design yeah. uh, oh, it's <laughs> just very pleasant to see yeah it's coming out nice yeah. So I think like another good mock-up that we could have for them since their cider company is, uh, you know, either a six-pack box or a shipper or things like that, um, you know, when they're designing. So now we'll hop in and go and do it a little bit of a different way. Um, you know, we can go to Adobe Stock over here um, and we can go and find like a nice image to go and use and mock up on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, let's just type in box mock-up. see what we get. So as you can see here, there's like a ton of different mm -hmm. uh, elements and you know, we want to find one that looks like and kind of go and fit some uh, of these cider uh, cans mm -hmm. inside of it and we'll go and fit nicely. So this one on the right kind of feels right. You could probably fit mm -hmm. a, a six pack inside of there. Mm -hmm. Just browse like a little bit further. See if there's anything else you want to do. Mm -hmm. And it really depends too, like uh, what you want to do. Sometimes we'll go and use a mock-up like this that has multiple sides, um, you know, depending on the time, like something like this could be nice where you just have to mock up like the front side of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cause these are kind of just quick explorations. Um, we'll go and do these elements in the beginning just to give the client an idea of what they want to go and use mm -hmm. and like how the brand could expand. But then typically after we get done with the brand identity and packaging version of it, we'll actually dive into these projects. It's a full project mm -hmm. and, you know, give multiple versions and really spend some time um, exploring different options and things like that. Yeah, I agree. Let's find that box. Yeah, I think this top one that we found yeah, over here is probably, good. probably the one to go with. Yeah. Because like the proportions are pretty right. Yeah. Cool. Do that. Awesome. And then this uh, mock-up is getting activated into your lab in your libraries, meaning you can already start using it in your Photoshop or... Exactly. <clears throat> Bunch of this is your here. color library. <laughs> oh, other projects that we have going on. Yeah. Hmm. I guess you can just down uh, take the download for now. Yeah, might be easier. Yeah. Our libraries are messy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And we're gonna give you some design feedback on your daily creative challenge in about 55 minutes. So make sure to submit your work. Yeah, definitely can't wait to go and see what you guys put together. Yeah. Cool, so this one came as a JPEG right here. Um, so we can go and start working with it. Uh, so typically, uh, like last time, we kind of had these boxes that were already scaled and put into um, you know, the shape. So what I'd go into here is kind of eyeball it. 
I'd go and take like a square right here, mm -hmm. um, kind of estimate the size that you have going on there, um, and make a flat box. Mm -hmm. So that's how you're going to go and have your the size of the design that you go, need. Um, and from there, I'll go and right click, convert to smart objects. So mm -hmm. now when you click into it, you have this box right here. Oh yeah, and then we can edit the design, huh? Exactly. Um, awesome. Let me just change my workspace. See, mockups are not aren't that difficult to make. <laughs> <laughs> you can also just take a photo and then make smart objects, you know, modify them and reuse them. Exactly. What's the key command to switch it up so your tabs are still up top? Ooh. It's command. No, not that. I always hate when I go and get into this. What are you looking for? Just to go and get the tabs back on top there. Oh. Um, do you have only this file open? No. Usually you no, can just uh, connect them by sliding them together. I know it's like a it's like a workspace type thing that we uh, have going on here. Maybe view. Somewhere there, maybe. Hmm. Screen mode. S maybe standard screen mode. Ah, uh, oh, we're yeah. back. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always click that. I forget. It's like some key command that you have in there, and then it yeah, goes. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I'm I'm also also mista mistakenly uh, putting some key command, and then I don't know how to go back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I oh, gotta figure it out. Yeah. All right. Cool. So now we have our layers here. Oh, I messed up my stuff. Cool, so we got that back in there. Mm -hmm. um, cool, so as I was saying, now that's your smart object here. So now you can do whatever you want, like over here on this side, um, and you can go and skew it and kind of make it fit the shape of the box oh, that you yeah. want to have. So I think I'm going to go into here and just make this a color real quick, just so we can have an idea. Mm -hmm. Pretty close to our actual color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you save that, then it updates over here. Um, so I might just go in here. I'll go over to distort. So I'll just kind of zoom in. Bring it over to here. So at this point, we're making our own mock-up basically from a photo, right? Exactly. So this is something really cool to learn, guys. Because you can reuse this one for later projects as well for yourself. Yep, which is what we definitely like doing. So if we go and make this shipper, uh, a lot of times we use it this other time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it then. saves you It saves you time, right? Exactly. Can you use something? Yep. Amazing. So we have there that we in there. Then I might go and put a multiply on it too. So then you kind of get like a little bit of the shadows and yeah. stuff from the mm -hmm. box. See, and that kind of has like a little bit of an edge there. So mm -hmm. um, go back to transform and distort mm -hmm. again and kind of get it back down onto that corner that we have going. Mm -hmm. Cool. So then we go and hop back into the smart object here. And then we'll go and start designing stuff in here. So for these mockups, a lot of times we'll just go and use it in Photoshop because this isn't a real size or anything like that. So you can easily just take some of the elements in, design mm -hmm. it up in there, and then you know really move into it. Um, so cool. we hop back over to Illustrator. We can grab some of our elements that we want. I love how everything's so connected. It's amazing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a big thing when you're starting it off to go and have this brand consistency, especially with a new brand. Um, because no one knows what it is yet. So kind of as a brand goes, you want it to be consistent in the beginning and then you, mm -hmm. know, you can start getting a little bit more wild you know, as you expand it from there. But you kind of want to create this language that people are going to go and learn and mm -hmm. uh, associate with the brand. Yeah. But yeah, so maybe we can go and use some of these other lockups too, kind of work them in along with the main one. So this one might be good to go and use like on the side. Yeah, and basically all the elements that we have on the can probably go onto the packaging. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we'll ha hop back into Photoshop here. We can paste this in as a smart object. Bring that in. See if it fits nicely in there. Then once mm. you save that, it hops oh, back up and it cool. updates right inside there so that you can see it's distorted already so it kind of fits right on top of there. Mm -hmm which is nice. Perfect. 
Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, and then we'll start doing a similar thing with the other sides too. So again, right here we just have our label, which we want to make front, just so you kind of know which one you are, so you don't get confused with all these different uh, smart objects that mm -hmm. we're going to start making. Name your layers, guys. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, just like a guesstimate here of like how big it would be. Since this one's like distorted a little bit, you don't want to go and make it that thin because it's going to be expanded a little bit. So mm. it kind of looks like a square that we have going on. So I might just go and hold down shift to make a perfect square mm -hmm. um, and get that set up right there too. So again, once we hop into there, we'll name this one side, turn it into a smart object. Mm -hmm. And then and change the color in here again, just so it's easy to see where everything's at. I might make this one just a different color so then it's easier to tell the difference between the one we made last time and then this side. Mm. Patrick is asking, is Illustrator more difficult to learn than Photoshop? What do you think? Um, I'm definitely a bit more comfortable in Illustrator. I think they both can do like a ton of different things. Um, yeah. You know, it really depends like what type of project you're working on and things like that. Um, you know, Photoshop's good for image manipulation and things like that. Yeah. And if you want to work more vector graphics, Illustrator's definitely your way to go. Mm -hmm. um, but they can both do like a ton of different things. Um, I just typically went, went a little bit more Illustrator based because most of our stuff is like packaging work that's mm -hmm. more vector based. We do a lot of branding, so that's logo based and things like that. Um, so we've definitely just, um, I've used that more in my career. And also I worked at a signage company that was pretty much all vector based. So kind of just as I grew, I stuck to that like a little bit more. And just for the yeah. type of work we do, it leans, lends itself a little bit better to that. But um, both are really powerful programs and mm -hmm. it really just depends on what type of work you're using. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, they are both very different. So mm -hmm. it's just two different worlds for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It really so, depends on the project you're working on. Yeah. I feel like uh, Photoshop, though, is very versatile. So it's kind of um, you have very different th things that you can do with it. So for one, you can uh, actually do graphics with it. And for, for the second, you can also do photo manipulation. So that's two completely different, you know, things that are being combined here in, in Photoshop, which I think is amazing. Uh, but in Illustrator, since you're only working with a, uh, really with a vector graphics, uh, you kind of don't have this photo manipulation aspect to it. So it might be a little bit easier to learn, I feel, than Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, nonetheless, I feel Photoshop has a lot of, there is a lot of poss possibility uh, working in Photoshop. So I feel like both kind of go together and I'm usually using both in my workflow. Yeah, just, me too. Just as you, yeah. Yeah. So, um, And yeah. I also think too um, that, you know, Photoshop, there's like probably a, you know, learning curve to it. Like you probably learn a lot of the basics, you know, yeah. pretty easily and get that down. But then like you can get into all these crazy advanced things. Like if you watch through the videos. Yeah, on, it can go really into depth. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. like some amazing stuff you can go and do with it. Yeah. Yeah, Photoshop is great. Yeah, and I also love the fact that you can that you have an AI behind it that can actually help you, um, yeah, retouch pictures and all that stuff. So there is definitely a lot going on in Photoshop. Both exactly. both are worth learning. I would say at the same uh, scale. Yeah, I'd say too. Yeah, Alexandra is also saying she's using both in her workflow. Yeah. Awesome. Yep, so again, just making the top now so that we have all our sides and then we can really get designing after that. Just grabbing these side points right here mm -hmm. um, and just lining them up with the corners that we had on our image. Mm -hmm. um, and also too, a lot of times we'll go in after and uh, right now I'll just get an estimate right here with you mm -hmm. know, these hard corners and stuff, but then eventually we'll probably go in and uh, mask these off to kind of like wrap around like those different like corners that you saw before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of them are like a little bit softer, like yeah. um, so that you don't have these like jagged edges sticking out. Axel is asking, with your experience in branding, when do you, um, when would you change the image of a brand? Um, in like which context, like a logo design or? I would think the right point to change the 
image of a brand is when you see that it's not working out for the, for the clients. That, for example, you're not reaching the right audience with a brand. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that was kind of the question here. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I also think too that, you know, a brand's, you know, a living thing pretty much. It's got to grow. It takes yeah. a while for people to go and see it. Like, you know, you can go and put something out in the beginning, but it's really not going to gain that brand equity until eventually when you go and, you know, have it out in the world for a mm -hmm. bit and see how people are responding to it and associate it and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so, you know, it's really an evolving thing that, you know, can be tweaked if needed throughout. Mm -hmm. um, like I Julia agree. Was saying. I definitely agree. And I also think that a brand can also change their image if they would like to, for example, attract a different audience or uh, attract uh, a bigger audience. You know, they sometimes do change their views and that also changed the whole brand image. Exactly, because if you need to pivot um, based on, you know, a different target audience you have, maybe they have one product to start off with and they want to mm. go and have another one that's directed yeah. towards someone else, sometimes you need to round it out like a little bit. From and then there. also if, if they have multiple products that they're testing in the market and they see, okay, this project product is doing better and they basically change their whole, uh, yeah, their whole orientation. So that's when it comes to uh, branding and, you know, maybe spe specializing in certain group of people that exactly. they want to target. Yeah. So now I'm going to add like a mask to this top one because as you can see, there's kind of like this inset over here. Um, and then you have like this curve right here. So we kind of want to go and edit that to go mm -hmm. and, you know, work around there. So you can do that a couple of ways. We could have either just made a mask. And since there's just a couple areas that I need to go and do right now, I'm probably just going to take the brush tool and touch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Another option that we could have did is take the pen tool and kind of wrap around this area up mm -hmm. here. Um, and then you can kind of create a selection from there that you want to mask off. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said from here, since it's just kind of a small area, let's we'll kind of do this. Mm -hmm. And it's also mock-up purposes um, that's going into this presentation. It's nothing, you know, final or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why you want it to be pretty close, um, it doesn't have to be necessarily like perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was also a question if it's possible to make those surfaces with a pen tool and yeah. Yep, you can make those yeah. as well. So now when you zoom out, you kind of have that over there. Um, and we'll kind of do the same thing like over here. Just kind of dive into there. And if you hold down control and option, you can go and move oh, your yeah. mouse left and right and it goes and yeah. brings that. And if you go up and down, it uh, feathers out the brush like a little mm -hmm. bit too, which is a nice tip if you want a nice soft edge to it. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to go in up to the menu every time and you know tweak what you have going on, it's nice mm -hmm. and fluid and you kind of eyeball everything. Mm -hmm. We're in the pixels right now. Exactly, <laughs> deep in We're there. We're deep in the pixels. <laughs> <laughs> All about the little details there. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking good. Cool, and that's there pretty solid go. for right now. Mm -hmm. So as you see, we have like the different sides here that we can use. We just use the different colors to kind of establish, you know, which one was which and kind of see how we're lining everything up. Um, so now we'll hop in and start doing some of the designs here. Um, we have that like on the front, so maybe we can go and move into the side like a little bit. Um, this makes it so much easier, right? Exactly. Like you, just, uh, you can just modify it and use it for later. So, yep. so if you have another project where you need a similar thing, now you got your own mock-up to go yeah. and use. Yeah, so we can bring some of these elements like we were chatting about before, like this made in the Hudson Valley kind of little lock-up. That might be a nice one to go and put on here. Mm -hmm. So go and bring that in like that, which is nice. Mm -hmm. You know, little details. Yeah, Tim's saying, um, thanks to the multiply blending mode, you can still see the paper texture. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we want. We wanted to have a natural look. That's why we started off with this photo, um, you know, where then the layers were adopted to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the nice thing too is sometimes if you grab another mock-up, um, I think I saw when we were browsing through that there was like some cardboard and things like that. Mm -hmm. Also, you can go and do the multiply to kind of bring some of that like cardboard texture. Or if oh, you yeah. go and put like or sometimes you might want to put a texture in between the two. So, mm -hmm. you know, if we put down a texture on top of here that had like a little bit more of like a, you know, little grit cardboard paper or something like that, yeah. or cardboard mm -hmm. or things like that, then it can go um, and work like that as well. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. So right now it's like the same color that you have going on, but mm -hmm. a nice quick way to be able to edit the colors in Photoshop. We'll go and grab this color right here. And you can do this a couple ways, but the color overlay is kind of a nice way to go and do it. So you just click on color overlay. You type that on. Oops, just gotta go and paste that color in there. And then it changes the color from there. And then you can easily go and switch it out to say we wanted to go and do like, you know, white instead. Then it easily just updates it. Mm -hmm. We'll stick with the brand colors that we have going on. Mm -hmm. So the man in the Hudson Valley. Massimiliano is saying, hello people. Hey, Massimiliano. Hey. Where are you from? Sounds like you're Italian. Buona via. <laughs> So then as you can see right here, it's skewing over, so you kind of have that side of the box going as well. So right now it's kind of simple. We might want to go and put some other details onto here as well. Um, you know, maybe some social handles or something like that. That could be nice too. So go and use like the text tool. Um, oops. Audie's asking, what about the bottle and the cap? So in this case, it's a can, so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have, uh, but you can equally, I mean, it depends on what the brand is producing. Yeah, in this exactly. this case, it's producing a can. Yeah. So we are using May can May branch out to bottles after. There is also um, a bunch of bottle mock-ups, so you can mm -hmm. also do that with a bottle. Yeah. Excuse the typeface that we wanted to. Um, and of course, it's also possible to make those mockups in Dimension. Yep. Where definitely. you can also toss and turn the object and just a apply your design to it. Yeah, which that's really nice as well. Mm -hmm. I gotta dive into that a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty new. But it's really cool. I had so much fun working with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks awesome. I was kind of checking it out the other day. There's a lot of like cool stuff that they had going mm -hmm. on in it. Yeah, and there's a bunch of free mockups that are already there in the library, which is amazing. Massimiliano is saying hello from Berlin. Okay, so <laughs> you're in Berlin now, but your name still sounds not German. <laughs> <laughs> will be good to know where you're from. Javier is saying hi from Costa Rica. Hi, back to Costa Rica from San Francisco. Awesome. Cool, so that's kind of nice right there. And we're starting to go and have it all come together. I'm actually thinking maybe this could go and use the other lockup. It's looking a little plain right now, so we'll dive back into that front. This might be a good lockup to go and use on the top of it, actually. So I'll go back to Illustrator, mm -hmm. grab my logo right here, delete that guy out of there. Bring this back on. There we go. So there we go. That gives a little bit more visual impact. Then we'll hop into the top. And it might be nice here to kind of use, uh, you know, maybe this color as the background and go and work it in just to give a little bit. Because then if the box like folds into the top like that, then you have this nice, cool, um, you know, different look and kind of creates like some different visual hierarchy and things like that. Mm -hmm. See, si, Massim Massimiliano is Italian. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it right there. Yeah. Okay, saying hi, girl, in orange t shirt. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this logo lockup might be nice to use on the top because we have a pretty horizontal look there. So if we come in, then we kind of see how it's all, all working together. Yeah. We have a nice little box awesome. going in there. Yeah, I love how you put the lighter color on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it kind of gives a it. Bit. Yeah, it gives it a good. It almost looks like a brick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you you know, colors, like those colors. Like it's super cool. I think yeah, it works super cool. well. Has that retro look to it? Yeah. Cool, and then it also might be nice to go and work in some of that texture that we were using yesterday. Um, so if we go over. I think my brushes are gone, so I'll bring those back up. Heida is saying, Heida, I hope I pronounce it right, says hi from Mexico. Hey. Mexico very present here. Love it. 
Last time I'm saying hi from Trinidad. Wow. There you go. That's so amazing. A little texture on there now. We'll kind of do the same thing there. So how we're doing it, we're just putting like a little mask on top of it. Um, and then kind of masking out the areas where the texture is. So then you see oh, the yeah. background that goes through Super it. Super cool. So yeah, that just had, helps add in a little bit of that, you know, grit to it that we had mm -hmm. going in the logo and things like that. So you just get that nice little bit of texture there. And we'll do the same thing for the side over here. So that was a brush that yep. you used? Yeah, so I'm just masking off each element mm -hmm. and then we're brushing it. And, and where, where did you get brush. that one from? Did you make it yourself or? No, I didn't make this one myself. I think I got this one from Spoon Graphics. They mm -hmm. have a lot of free resources that are nice. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I love that. This one is very um, like universal. You can almost use it in, in almost every design. If you yeah, make exactly. It a bit more if you rough. want any more that texture, yeah, which it's is very fine. Nice. It's a very nice texture. Yeah, because you can click like you know, the yeah. more clicks you have on it, the more rough and it looks mm -hmm. like. You know, if we want this to look like really rough, like there, you just click around and you can go and keep adding to it. They also have like a bunch of different uh, like brushes in here too. Like if you see up here, there's like a bunch of different slight variations, which mm -hmm. are nice to like work in, especially if you're working in like a larger scale where mm -hmm. people are gonna notice like, you know, more of the texture in there and you don't want it to be the same one repeated all the time. Awesome. Sabib is saying hi from Indonesia. Eduardo from Brazil, welcome. So cool mm -hmm. to have you guys here. Yeah. Then also a nice thing about making these smart objects too, um, in these boxes that you have, you can just kind of click into these. So if you go and um, command click on right here, you see how it goes and makes the selection right around mm -hmm. it. Then you can shift click and you'll add that one to it and you can shift click there to add that one. And mm -hmm. we kind of have like a rough, um, a rough box right there. Mm -hmm. um, so then what I'll go and do is I'll hit command shift I, which selects inverse. Um, and then that's gonna allow us to go and kind of make a background from there uh -huh. too. Uh, awesome. So if we want to kind of use that same thing that we were talking about last time, where on the mock-ups we have different colored backgrounds for everything, um, then this is how you can go and get a background like nice and quickly from there. Mm -hmm. um, so I might make a shape back there. Hey, some Ukrainians here. Erica, welcome. I'm Ukrainian too. <laughs> <laughs> so first we want to go and make our background shape. So maybe we'll go and use the darker red or the black, um, just so we can go and see the difference between those. And then click here, click here, click here, and then the command shift I. And that's gonna go and mask it out. So now we have mm -hmm. like this box going around. You know, we have like these little bit of edges here too that we gotta get rid of on this mask as well. So mm -hmm. we'll just dive into there like we did last time. We just gotta switch our brush back over. To something mm. nice and simple. Yeah. Go away, Siri. <laughs> Siri's always listening. <laughs> <laughs> so let me start getting like the darkness in here. We can kind of clean this up a little bit quickly. Just so we don't have those white edges sticking out anywhere. Pedro here from Portugal. Welcome. Greetings from Seattle. Andrew, good to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> Tim was saying, hi Siri, please finish my design for me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, maybe one day. Maybe not. Maybe yeah. that would uh, uh, steal our jobs. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust Siri anyways. Yeah, right. They're stealing our jobs. You can't even tell her to go and call someone without calling the wrong person. I don't think she can go and do the whole design. <laughs> Cool, so we can go and start taking some color from here. Um, might be nice to go and add in um, like a little bit of a gradient like on top of it. Maybe I'll go and make like a little bit of a darker red. Kind of create like a little bit of contrast from here. Yeah. Super cool, love the colors. Yep, coming through nicely. Mm -hmm. I'll probably want to put that mask on there too, because right now, since we have multiplies on these top ones, um, whatever you have below is still going to go and show through. So right now, these are on top of the background that we have going. So if I go and put this gradient here, you have the multiply going, so you can still see through right here. So that's how you're going to get like a little bit of stuff on top of there. But if we don't want that to appear on there at all, 
then we can just have it go on the background. Um, but this does look like a little bit flat, so we might go and add like a couple gradients onto here as well too. Um, so you can do those like a couple different ways. Um, I like to select them and just make like a layer on top of it so I can delete if I want to. You can always also use like a gradient overlay if you wanted to as well. Um, but I like this way so then I can affect like the opacity and stuff pretty easily and delete it out. And if I need to go and like mask anything out, then you can go and do that as well. Hmm. So take that to add that in there a little bit. As I was mentioned before, you can kind of adjust the opacity to kind of make it a little bit less if you need to. So we have that going in there. Um, and yeah, we start getting a little bit of depth now too. So I'll go and select that again too. Make a layer on top of it for this gradient. Bring it up there so we have a little bit of shadow coming from back there, which I think helps like a bit. And actually, since this one's primarily red, might be nicer to go and use like something like that. Mm -hmm. And we have the daily creative challenge reviews in 28 minutes, 29 minutes, 28.52. <laughs> so yeah, cool. make sure to submit your artwork. So we'll save this PSD in here, just so we have it for later reference. Awesome. Got that in there. And there was also a question if it's possible to create a uh, texture in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. And if you like, I can show this real quick. So yeah. it's actually pretty easy. What I sometimes do is I take a picture like this, for example, that has texture. Um, and I just found it here on uh, Adobe Stock. I just type, type texture and there's a bunch of different textures that you can use. So then what we can do is uh, we can do an image trace, which uh, basically creates um, a vector out of all the little fine details. So um, yeah, and then if you click expand, you have a vector file here. So you basically can use this to overlay onto different images. Of course, you can decrease the opacity here. And you can, for example, overlay this uh, over text or just use it as a background, you know. So it's a very, very easy way to, you know, to create a, some kind of texture in your, in your images. Mm -hmm. And then you're so, not yeah. limited to like brushes that you find online exactly. or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. And it's very, very easy uh, to make. So, and you can do it from any kind of texture. Mm -hmm. like if you want brick texture or something, you can just take a JPEG off a brick and yeah, just click, um, just click image trace and expand. And there is also um, some, some more settings, like you can refine it in the settings if you like. Yeah, so it's a very quick, small tip. Yeah, and you can get really custom with it too, which is cool. You can go and add in, um, like if you want to take your own photos like outside, you can go and take your yeah, own ones of like pictures. Yeah, that helps a lot too, yeah. Yeah, like if you want to go and take like a photo of a wall and you like that texture on there, you could do that. And then you can use the process that mm -hmm. Julia was just talking about, which is really cool. Get some really unique stuff in there. Yeah. Cool. So we're gonna save that into our smart objects. Or um, we're saving for web, so then we can go and place it into here. Um, so I was gonna grab that. I think a little grid like this would be nice. Mm -hmm. InDesign has those nice little guides there, so if you get halfway down the page, puts this little pink line across, so mm -hmm. you know exactly where you are. Let's go in here, grab our box mock-up, place it nicely in there, and then we just gotta resize it down. Yeah, and there is also a question uh, if it's better to create a Behance portfolio or a um, website portfolio. And um, I can show you guys how I'm doing this. So um, I just have my, uh, Behance portfolio right here, and then you can go on um, uh, on portfolio.adobe.com, where you can create a free portfolio website, where you can pick the projects that you have uploaded in your Behance, whatever you like. Sometimes maybe you don't want to show all the projects, so you can pick and choose, and then you can make a. Uh, it makes automatically a site like this, where you can uh, 
yeah, click on the projects and it basically shows your Behance project, but it's on a separate website, like mine is personalized, masalska.myportfolio.com, you know, um, and there you can also add your links to, um, I don't know, to whatever um, accounts you wanna connect to it. So here's my, um, my personal um, Instagram. You can also connect your professional Instagram page. Yeah, feel free to follow me. Just another sunny girl. <laughs> yeah. And Ron's here, macaroni underscore creative. Yeah, check it out. That's where we probably have our work updated most often because yeah. you can just upload, you know, one little shot to it, stuff that's yeah. in progress. The thing of packaging is it typically takes a while to get it live and, and out there in the real world. Yeah. Um, I love the little quick quick peeks on the projects, you know, where you don't have to uh, show a bunch of things, but just, you know, just one image. Yeah, you kind of see what we're working with and working on. Yeah, amazing. And I really like that. Can you tell us more about this project here? Because I remember mm -hmm. I've been, I've bought this sauce actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bought this barbecue sauce, yeah, and I really like it. Yeah, they're actually located around here, oh, here yeah. on the West Coast, but uh, yeah, it's Kendra's Barbecue. Um, We've been working with them for a bit now, uh, working on some of their packaging designs and doing some stuff for the website uh, currently and things like that. Um, but yeah, they're just this handcrafted organic um, uh, barbecue sauce. They do a bunch of stuff like different barbecue sauces, um, different seasonings, things like that. Um, and they want to kind of refresh the look like a little bit from there. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually one of the things that we presented to them in one of their round ones. Um, mm -hmm. So we wanted to take like a little bit from their roots there you know, a family-owned company. Mm -hmm. um, so this is also basically a mock-up that you did in a very similar way like we're seeing it today. Exactly, yeah. They had like some shots of their bottles that uh, we went and took and then we kind of replaced the, um, you know, labels on We put a little bit of gradients on the side and things like that. But we were kind of going for, you know, more of like an old school look with it. Uh, refreshed like their logo a little bit and we made that uh, pattern up top. So then um, on those little necks, you can go and see which kind you're getting, whether it's the zero sugar or the organic or they have an original one mm -hmm. that we did as well. Um, but yeah, John Kinder was their grandfather, I believe. Um, mm. so that was a big part of their brand. So we wanted to have, you know, his signature on everything to kind of bring that handcrafted family element into it. You know, what's funny, uh, Kinder in German means children. Oh yeah. That's so probably, that's where, they, a, that's probably a, where they got it from. It's yeah. children right there. Yeah, you know, the like, Kinder surprise? Nah. Um, so it's like a, basically like an egg, which is made of chocolate and there's a little plastic box inside with oh, a little gotcha. toy. So, um, so I think in Germany it really makes sense because uh, the brand Kinder is also, um, yeah, means children. So the product is for children. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. I really like this. Thanks. I also like the colors that you picked here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazing. tone back to kind of keep that, you know, natural kind of feel to everything. Mm -hmm. And very modern too. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, it was Yay. a fun project to work on. Awesome. Cool, so we got both our mock-ups laying in there. So again, it's starting to, you know, come come alive all together. Um, so then we'll hop in and we'll go and do one more mock-up. Um, we can close out of some of these guys that we got going on. Get rid of some of these tabs. Cool. Um, so the next one that we might want to do is uh, we do like a landing page a lot where, you know, it might just go and be like a hero image or something like that just to get the vibe across her. You know, sometimes we do a product page, which is nice too, to go and show the packaging that we did and put it in there and see how it kind of, you know, works together. Oh yeah, David, David, uh, Divad is saying, uh, wait, kindergarten? Wait, that's exactly what it means in Germany. <laughs> it's a children's garden. So yeah, I think this word might have been adopted from the German here. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Cool, so we'll dive into here, see what our space is like. Um, looks like we have about seven and a half by four. So we're gonna go and create something that has this right here. So like 7.5 by five. Let me just keep that at 300 for right now. Nick is saying, nice work, Ron. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> cool, so we'll dive into here, and we're just gonna make this simple hero image slash landing page, so then they can kind of get an idea of what, you know, maybe a product page or something like that will look at. So, I'll just go and make like a little square right here, kind of like the 
you know, little Instagram shot that you see a lot of times mm -hmm. on different websites and things like that. But again, just to give them an idea of, you know, how it could go and look with their brand. Um, start this off, hop into here, come back and grab this color that we've been using. You can either edit up here, replace that in. So let's start off with the light color so you can see text on top of it and things like that. Then maybe we'll go into our finder, grab our can mock-up, bring that into there. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you can sit over there. Maybe we'll make like a little product page mm -hmm. or something because that's always nice to go and show them how, you know, the can will look digitally mm -hmm. or, you know, sitting there mm, um, yeah. with like type and stuff like that around it. So let's place that guy right there for now. Probably want to put a little I also in. like how sometimes, you know, um, the background surface is a little bit like shorter than than the product itself, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it's, it has the feeling like as if it's in the background. Yeah, kind of like sitting on top of it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Make a little text box right here. Um, so let's see what we got here. This is the Apple Crisp. So at this point, this could be represent some kind of printed advertisement as well, right? Yeah, it could some too. Some kind of billboard could be that. Yeah, really whatever you want to go and do. We use yeah. uh, the landing page because like a lot of times, you know, people have a landing page and things like that, but also like, you know, you can make subway ads, you can make posters, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some different things like that. And you could also use Adobe XD too to go and do it instead of Photoshop. So then, you know, if they actually want you to go and do the landing page after, then you're all set to go. And you won't have to like yeah. hop back and forth, which could be nice too. Yeah, uh, Tim, good, um, good point. I think also you can use XD to make some kind of animation, create some animations to it, or mm -hmm. to make it look like a website. There is a bunch of tools that actually help you create a landing page very, very easily, like all the icons and um, a bunch of free illustrations that you can include, mm -hmm. all the plugins that are being developed right now. Um, I think it's a really cool way to uh, even go further with this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, usually when we go and actually design like landing pages or websites, we'll use XD or you know something like that um, to go and use. This is nice. We got all the elements right here. So we'll take that little description that we had on the can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Start bringing it together. I love that, as good as your grandma's dessert. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you use Command Shift on the arrows, you can go and affect the type size and then Option and then the up arrow keys goes in, lets you go and uh, mess with the letting and things like that as well. Yeah. That's so cool. Steve was saying, Ron, it's great to watch your workflow. So smooth and confident with the mouse and where to go next with the software. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Ron this. is always a couple of steps ahead, huh? <laughs> in his, in his uh, mind. Been doing this a long time. Yeah. How long have you been working as a, as a designer? Um, as a designer, about six or seven years now. And uh -huh. then, uh, well, since I graduated college, and obviously in college you add those years onto it, and you got mm -hmm. like 10 years of doing design things. Yeah. Um, and then f doing this type of work, like freelancing, yeah. usually it's been, you know, about a year and a half. Do you also have that sometimes when you do something, like uh, not on your computer, but like some something like in a kitchen or something, and you want to go control Z? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> throw, throw the wrong. You're like, oh wait, I can't go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, burn what you're cooking on. It's like, command Z, command, command Z. Z. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no way back in real life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. I sometimes some, sometimes catch myself thinking that, and I'm like, oh, wow, you're really into it right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's one too far. Maybe yeah. one day. Cool, so we have this going right here. I want to get some pricing going. It's a good price, five dollars for a can. Mm -hmm. But 
probably have a six pack, so going up that a little bit to $30 for a six pack. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, I really love the color scheme for the branding. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. It's a color scheme for a very red apple, very, very, very ripe apple. Exactly. Yeah, it's always good to have some kind of background story for the client, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, it just gives you more to pull from. Yeah. It's all about the feeling. That's why that's why they say a brand brand feel, right? Exactly. Yeah. And we have the daily creative challenge reviews in about 14 minutes. Perfect. So you guys submit. It's the last last moments where you can submit and then we will be reviewing them soon. Kevin is asking $30 for a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exclusive local produce. Exactly. Limited, limited amount. We'll go higher. This could be a, a 12 pack here. Okay. $30 <laughs> is expensive for that. Not that premium here. <laughs> Just so they know. 12 pack. 24 pack. We'll oh, 24. Bigger. Wow, 24. If you want the big guy, really invest in it. Might want to make that a little bit smaller so it's just a detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about the hierarchy, right? Yep, there you go. More affordable now. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Kevin, just for you. Exactly. We lowered the price. <laughs> no, we didn't lower the price. We we increased the amount. <laughs> <laughs> Adobe Live discount. Yeah. Cool. So we got some nice stuff going on. Like we were saying yesterday, we have some different like logo lockups that we can kind of go and use. I think this guy might be nice. This guy might be a little bit too tall over here. Mm -hmm. So we'll go with something like that. Yeah. Steve is saying 9% alcohol, that's a lot of kick in each can. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's the higher price point. Yeah. Cool. It's coming together so nicely. Yep. And you try to avoid uh, repeating the same logo lockup, right? Exactly. So it's mm -hmm. not, not too much there and you kind of get the, the vibe mm -hmm. of everything else. Yeah. Kevin is saying love so much better the price. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Well, now you got you as a new customer, huh? Exactly. Uh, Steve is asking, what's the chart Apple font? Everybody loves the font. So uh, it's asking. called Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, which actually works out well because uh, Kingston, where this place is supposed to be uh, based, is on the Hudson River. Oh. It's a little Easter perfect. egg in there. Maybe it's even inspired from there. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and the other typeface, I think, was alternate gothic, right? Yep. The one that's underneath? Yeah, exactly. The condensed typeface. Condensed type -based. one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we have this going here. Might need to give it a little bit more space. The burger. Yeah, the little hamburger. It's that to make it nice and even. Cool. We got some stuff going right here. Might even be cool to go and bring this like line into it too. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll make another one that goes up here. Oh yeah, that's exactly, remember there. when I was talking about it? Yeah, I, yeah That's exactly, exactly what, I, what my thought was. Cause it kind of separates it into two parts. Exactly. Oh yeah. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just have to make sure we got the right color going here. You can also set it up into libraries too, so you don't have to keep bouncing back and forth, which is what I mm -hmm. probably should have did, but we're here now. Hmm. Ashi is asking, is this project st uh, real or still an idea? Um, this one's just an idea, but now coming to But you to never life, know. Yay. Never Maybe know. Maybe someone out there <laughs> wants to go and start, start their own cider company, then yeah. hop right Let in. Let Ron know. Yeah, exactly. We got a can design for you. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Let's bring 
send some of this in, then we'll drop these guys down. Some, some old designer humor. <laughs> yeah, nice. I love that. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Yeah, and this could be part of the brand guidelines, right? Yep, exactly. So a lot of times we'll go and use these mock-ups that we use in the first uh, the first uh, presentation or you know whatever presentation we get to, and then we'll go and apply that into the brand guidelines after. Mm -hmm. So on the brand, gui brand guidelines, you will have all the color codes for the different ways of printing. Exactly. RGB, CMYK, Pantone. Yep, have all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Select these, make sure they're all nice and aligned. All right, yeah, we have a pretty cool. good mock-up. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I also saw a comment about the grid in there too. And typically, um, you know, if we're designing an actual website, we'll go and use like a 12-com grid and things like that. But since it's just for mock-up purposes, mm -hmm. we just like to move quickly through it um, mm -hmm. because, you know, they could scrap this idea um, right away. So it's nice to just kind of, you know, mock something up kind of quicker. And um, even though those details are important, you know, as it goes, um, you know, into an actual project, mm. you know, for this purpose, it could just kind of be laid out and kind of give a general sense of these mm -hmm. because, you know, we might not even use this layout. If we did hop into the website, we'd probably want mm -hmm. to do more exploration and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so okay. just from like a business sense and, you know, trying to keep things efficient, um, it's like a good idea to just kind of move quickly through it. But I mean, the nice thing if you did actually go and do it would be, um, you know, you'd actually have a, a working website to go and use or, a, you know, working design. Cool, so right now I put a little drop shadow on there. Um, we're gonna go and take a box to go and switch up the background color. Um, and before we already used this burgundy color, we used the gold color, so I think I'm gonna go and use this guy down here. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe just- So you created a drop shadow of the- Exactly, a little bit of drop shadow surface. to create like a little bit of mm -hmm. a difference from it. Maybe, yeah, that's may cool. bring that up like a little bit more so it doesn't blend in too much. And yeah, we have like a little, nice little mock up right there mm -hmm. to give them an idea of how it can go and translate mm -hmm. into the web. Uh, so yeah, I'll I love that. And it gives this. us uh, three dimensionality a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Save that in there. And again, save for web. Mm hmm. Awesome. And now we can hop back into our InDesign file, bring out our Finder. Mm -hmm. Yay! And just bring that down there. Super cool. We have a little bit of extra space. It's looking a little bit tight, so. That's all right, because we can just go and edit the background of this box over mm -hmm. here. So I'll take the stroke off of it, and we'll just go and double click on this. And you can just eye drop this guy over here. Or maybe not. I'll do it before. Mm -hmm. Copy that color. Yes. And there we go, we're all set. Mm -hmm. So now we have this nice brand page right here that has kind of everything laid out. Mm -hmm. So that's just one idea. It could be even multiple color options or something like that. Exactly. And this gives a good uh, overview of how the product could be you, yeah, looking. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so this gives a good idea of everything going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then typically from there we'll go and also lay out some other stuff. So we'll go and have like typography in here. We mm -hmm. can switch these out to the fonts that we're using. So like, so alternate Gothic, mm -hmm. and we can go in here, place that in just so they can kind of see how it looks and the whole uh, alphabet looks together. Yeah. Maybe we'll space this out a little bit, give it a little bit of breathing room, especially since we're tracking everything out when we're going through. Yeah. Um, We ended up using cross tin book for that. So we'll do kind of the same he thing here. And maybe just give that a little bit more space. This guy can come in a little bit though, because it'll be a little bit hard to read. Um, 
And then right here, we're using the alternate as well. Mm. Crossed in book. I like that typeface. Yeah, it's nice. Very like simple. Yeah. And five minutes until the daily creative challenge reviews. Decided to check them all out again. Yay. That's gonna be fun. Definitely. So then we'll also have a little example over here about how it might look when, you know, it's kind of all laid out together. Nice. When you're saying he likes the kind of negative space that you have there, in the layout of your product. Yeah, definitely. You want to just keep like some space for everything to go and live and breathe like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, then we'll go and grab our pages. Bring that up there. We like to finish off with the, the brand at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so we might grab another page here. Um, bring that up there. We'll probably want to show some of our logo designs too. So then a lot of times I'll just go and copy these directly out of here. Um, the one thing you got to make sure everything's outlined if you are copying and pasting from uh -huh. um, Illustrator or else the text gets a little like, wonky. Yeah. <laughs> the letters kind of move around yeah. as they want to. <laughs> yeah. Blossom is asking uh, for any tips for making a for making a portfolio or brand guidelines for a brand. Yeah, really, just try to be as detailed as possible. Kind of lay out things that they can do with it, that they can't do with it, um, and just try to give it. You know, break it down for them as simple as possible. Um, you know, they're not designers, so they're not going to have an idea of what to use. And um, also, if you have a specific way you want to use it, you kind of want to keep that in check. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not messed up, so you don't go and design this nice brand and these guidelines and things like that, and then look over and see it used the way that you don't want it to be used. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely want to define what not to do as well as what to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, if we have time after the reviews, I could also pull up, uh, you know, maybe brand guidelines that we've worked on in the past that we can cool. go and show I you guys. That would be cool. I think that would be awesome, yeah. Yeah. So brand guidelines is basically like a book of law for this brand. Exactly. <laughs> use this typeface for this, use this color for that, and exactly. the combination of all of that. Yeah, and also brand guidelines sometimes uh, include strategic things like, um, like what to, how to formulate things, you know, in the copy and um, how, n what, what not to say, you know, what, what words not to use. In, um, in correlation with a brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a lot of times there's a language with everything that you want to yeah. go and make sure stays in line. Um, you know, to kind of have that brand personality beyond you mm -hmm. know, what the logo looks like and things like that. Yeah, so it's not all just visual. There's a lot of strategy behind it. And bigger brands usually, like for example, if you think of Chanel or something, they have huge books of brand guidelines, you know, everything's yeah, like hundreds very, of pages. very, very, yeah. Like everything's defined until the very smallest detail. And then if you think about brands that are international and you have to have a different brand guideline for every country because obviously the brand has different, uh, you know, appeal and different languages and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's also very challenging to produce a brand guidelines for international market. Yeah, exactly. Yay. And we have 40 seconds until the daily creative challenge reviews. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, Thursday, some portfolio reviews I see here. Yep, so we'll dive into this a little bit after, but just to give you kind of the bones of it, well, the title pages, kind of show your option, the main packaging design, mm -hmm. then we'll break down the logo so we list primary horizontal type, 
um, so they kind of know like the different options that you can go and have from there um, and really review the logo itself break down the typography for them a little bit further um, mm -hmm. so they can go and examine all that and see what they like and don't like and finish it up with uh, the mock-ups to mm -hmm. kind of see how it all comes together yeah okay awesome so we're gonna be reviewing some some submissions of you guys um, and the topic was add um, text to an image so we will see some really cool um, designs from you guys this one is from Shahid Kazmi right here the princess volume three very stylized could be some mm -hmm. kind of movie poster yeah definitely yeah you get that vibe from it yeah it's nice how the color kind of works throughout her hair and then on the skin tones too like you know um the same kind of color palette but kind of using different textures in there mm -hmm. um, and then the contrast is nice between uh you know the cool colors used like above her eyes and the shadows and then the nice warm colors to make it stand out you know, one thing the type's like a little bit hard to read on top of there so maybe um you know if you can move her up or maybe make her hair a little bit shorter and kind of have the type down below it so it can kind of you know have a little bit more breathing room and uh mm -hmm. you know a little bit more legibility mm -hmm. but overall i think stylistically it's looking like really good yeah or maybe adjust the kerning a little bit you know a little bit more space between the letters will help you distinguish uh the letters mm -hmm. from the princess a little bit better um yeah and the typeface underneath uh, I mean, if, if it's some disclaimer and uh, you want it to be able to read, uh, but not necessarily the most important information or maybe information that you don't even want necessarily be readable from far anyway, then this is fine. Otherwise, uh, definitely there needs to be more contrast, uh, especially in these areas around here, um, because the ty uh, typeface really blends in into the skin tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I really love how you made this uh, glowing um, effect over here. Mm -hmm. It looks really cool. Yeah, it's nice. It stands out too from like the background yeah. with it. It looks really futuristic to me, like some kind of futuristic uh, Action movie. Action movie or something it's like, like some, that. Like, like Black Mirror or something like that. Yeah, you know? exactly. Have you watched that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love, love that one. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. Good job. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, Shahid. Lucas Drea. Oh, nice. This is super cool. Yeah, the textures that. on that's really nice too. Yeah, I love that. It's very professional and uh, I can see that you've been following us along today. And uh, yeah, you've adopted the texture. Mm -hmm. I love how you have this little grid around here. It gives mm -hmm. it some kind of technical feeling. Yeah, it. I like the balance between the little grittiness of the texture and then, yeah, you have some of those more mechanical looking lines on there to contrast and it kind of works with the typography that you're mm -hmm. using, the like, you know, thin ser uh, sand serifs in there. Mm -hmm. like, it oh. reminds me of uh, like photography film or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, where you can still see like, the fine, uh, um, the fine details. I love the type that you picked here as well and how you worked with a, with a shadow, with a drop shadow here mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, it's amazing. The identity, the identity. Yeah, there's some nice dimension in it too with all the different like shadows and kind of have the layers that it has in there. You know, one mm -hmm. thing maybe is to go in somewhere where the T's line up or a little bit close to that edge so it gets mm -hmm. like a tiny bit hard to read. So maybe try to, you know, finesse that a little bit so it's not right on the edge or like butting mm -hmm. up against it. But I think overall it looks awesome. Yeah, and I love how this poster has multiple levels of attention. So if you have a very short attention span, you'll just read the text. Mm -hmm. But then you also, if you want to spend time on this, you can really get into the details. Like for example, around here, there's some kind of little illustration going on around here. So, um, and those color codes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is a bunch of stuff to read which can, you know, keep your attention for a while, which I really like. It's, um, it looks very professional, I would say. Also the color combinations, how you did the, um, yeah, the color transfer here from red to blue, I think work, works out really well and blends in super nice. Mm -hmm. Good job, Lucas. All right, some golf action going on here. <laughs> cool, sand trap. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice blend between, uh, you know, mixing these different elements in here. Um, 
you know, the typography is nice too. Um, different uses with the, um, you know, a little bit of drop shadow back there and stuff. Uh, you know, how it multiplies on top of the sand trap really gets a, a good level of, uh, you know, different techniques used throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like um, how you experimented here with the type uh, typeface, including the typeface into the, or burning it, I think, into mm -hmm. the background photo. Um, yeah. Not sure what this is supposed to mean, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean it's good to experiment sometimes, you know, to um, develop your your skill and um, exactly just yeah. try out different styles and things like that and see yeah. how they kind of work together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Good job, Ken. Pumpkin spice latte season. <laughs> Almost <laughs> there. Almost there. Yeah. yeah. Though uh, here in California, I feel like it's we're a little bit behind. I feel like the best, uh, the best weather is like September, October. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and we don't really have that kind of autumn. I think that they have in in Germany or in parts of the U.S. as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but we still have the pumpkin spice latte season <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Even without the leaves and the, yeah. the season change. I love that. I love how you. Um, created this this little overlay here that kind of blends in with the sky in the background so mm -hmm. it's it almost looks like it's cut off the uh, the leaf here yeah exactly and there is also some structure that you still kept I, I can see here little details mm -hmm. um, yeah how it breaks through like a tiny yeah. bit within the mask that's mm -hmm. kind of nice right there looks very natural mm -hmm. I like that it's yeah. really cool good job good job Nicole Ooh, that looks cool. That is cool. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's nice how it's blended in there, but still goes and stands out. Like it feels like part of the landscape, but really that's still like the focal point on there and the sense of depth that's created between, you know, mixing in the building and masking it out. It's really nice as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also lo love how you um, built the hierarchy here. So London is obviously something that you see um, at first it calls your attention because it's just a very bright surface of, uh, of, of type here and I love how you how you uh, blended it in into the into the landscape and then the second thing you would read here is United Kingdom St. Paul's mm -hmm. um, which if you uh, let me move this one a little, a little quick like this <laughs> so if you align this one on this side um, I would rather maybe keep it on the on the left side, yeah, left justified. right? Otherwise, I would maybe align it to the right, mm -hmm. and maybe you can also use the grid of your of your type at the top, so it kind of like aligns all and looks very, you know, um, like it belongs together. So, but otherwise, it's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Really good job. Mm -hmm. This is from Shahid Kazmi. Shahid, I've seen you in the chat today. It's awesome. <laughs> Creativity is my lover. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. this is a nice, really, really textural right here. You got a lot of layers going like on top of each other and things mm -hmm. like that to kind of like, I think you can keep like diving deeper and deeper and seeing uh, like new things every time you go and look. Yeah. Um, so this almost looks like a coast to me from, from the top. Mm -hmm. But then you also have uh, these pieces here where you kind of like put it together and and suddenly you think of like burnt paper or ripped mm -hmm. paper. And then obviously the the ink here as well kind of reminds of old letters, mm -hmm. old love letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks good. Um, yeah, I can see there is there has been a lot of experimenting going on and I really like that, mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, I keep going. Michelle, great job all right I think we're almost through here let's see this is yesterday's daily creative challenge it's also a gift I cannot open it unfortunately mm -hmm. all right looks like we're gonna continue with uh, the presentation and uh, yeah so cool. so 
can we use parts of this presentation for as brand, brand guidelines? Yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. So if they were to go, I mean, a lot of times there's revision rounds in between this, so it doesn't look exactly how, you know, the first round might look. Um, but, you know, if it was going pick four, and we do something similar usually for the next rounds going forward, depending on what their feedback is, we might focus on a specific area. So, like, if they don't really like the typography with it, you know, we'll do more exploration from there. Mm -hmm. Usually we treat this kind of like as a funnel. So this top level right here is kind of, um, it's just a idea like that's coming in. So it's like a general idea. So they want to go and sign on to the general concept of it. So right now we might only have like one color here or like one typeface option, but then the next round we'll kind of dive deeper into it once they go and choose this direction. So on the next round, we might go and experiment with all this typography that's on here and give them like three different options or two different options. Um, we'll go and do different color palettes and things like that. If they generally like, you know, the color palette that we have going on here, then we'll give them stuff that's, you know, similar to it. Um, but you know, maybe it's a little more vibrant, maybe it's a little duller, um, you know, just to go and really explore the brand and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we typically use, like the round two, round three, four, to really dive in and do some more experimentation. So this first round is mostly to go and kind of, um, you know, give them a direction to go and choose mm -hmm. and, you know, sign onto a concept behind it. And then we get into the nitty gritty details from there um, on the rounds after that. Um, and then this way you're kind of spending like the right amount of time on each one so you're not um, investing like multiple rounds on multiple options and um, you know kind of it gives you more um, you know focus time on the direction that they like from there mm -hmm. um, but this is typically what we'll go and do for you know two to three rounds we might go and include some like other logo options that we had in here previously mm -hmm. um, you know like the um, I think we had some like horizontal versions in here and things like that so you know we might want to go and bring um, this guy into it too. Just make sure it's all aligned. Hmm. Now we might want to lay it out like a little bit differently from here. It's another strategy sometimes we're going to use. So if we have this guy's, like if this badge one over here is the primary, then we'll stack these over here. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes if you have multiple objects that are not grouped and if you al center align them, all the objects suddenly come together in the center. So you want to group the, the objects that, that are supposed to stay together first and then you align them, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Make sure that's centered there. And then, yeah, we can go and paste this in there too. Bring that down there. And then also with this, this one will be our horizontal. This one we can call stacked. So you can kind of see how the logo system's starting to come together. Mm -hmm. um, all in all. Center these, a lot of times we'll go in, you know. I can see there's a bunch of questions of uh, people where the design has not been reviewed or um, from maybe from the past sessions. You can also just join the Discord channel and get feedback from our moderators. So they're always uh, very happy to help you out mm -hmm. with feedback. Yeah, that looks good. Alex is saying, really loving these lockups and can designs. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you're getting so many compliments <laughs> on this. This is great. So it's organizing everything now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all set up here. Then we'll probably go and bring this guy to the center. Mm -hmm. As I was mentioning before, you kind of have this like pink line here, so you can kind of see when it's in the center or not. Bring it down like a little bit from there. You also have these nice little grid lines that pop up here, so you can tell that the spacing is like the same between everything. Um, and then typically we use like these little lines right here to kind of help break everything up. Let's put that in. Oh yeah. Give it a little bit of structure so it's mm -hmm. easy to go and see everything. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome possum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. Let's 
It's all coming together now. Just extend this up so it lines up there. Bring that down so it lines up with the bottom of that. And now we have a nice structured thing. So they can still see which one we want to use, like the primary one, like the one that we're using on top of the cans. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of see their other options that they have there. Okay, so that will be option one, two, three, four, right? Yep, exactly. So we'll probably use all these like as a system, but it's just kind of showing how it can go and break down throughout mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe they might like one more than the other. Maybe they won't mm -hmm. really like the arc. Then they can see that you know they can still use the overall concept, and um, you know the arc's not like a make or break type of thing. Yeah. You don't want to scare them off like necessarily all the time yeah. too. Like if it gets a little bit crazy, like, you have to use this one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's it's more of a point of discussion that you can go and talk through with them. Um, but yeah, this is typically the round one. Um, option one. Now we'd usually like write a little description here um, mm -hmm. based on whatever we go and discuss. Sometimes we have like multiple SKUs. So if we do that, you know, we'll usually have like a page that has like the different versions like next after here. Uh, so they can see how it's the system. We'll kind of pick a hero one, like the one that we like the best. And we'll put that on this main page. And then we'll go and have, you know, maybe four cans across the bottom down here. Mm -hmm. um, if they had like different flavors or things like that. Um, and then yeah, the logo design so they can really review all those typography and then mm -hmm. um, very brief very there. compact and a lot of information exactly yeah yep so it's all in there and then like I said before usually we provide like two to three options mm -hmm. uh, once in a while four options if uh, they want to look for it but then mm. yeah, you'll have a pay, uh, document that's probably about you know 30 pages ish and then mm -hmm. we'll go and have like a page at the end that kind of has you know maybe the three different uh, type sizes or the uh, can designs like yeah. all together so they can review it at the end and we'll go and have a presentation, walk through it with them and everything like that. So how long does you typically a presentation like this last? Uh, like when we're discussing it? Mm -hmm. um, usually it could be like anywhere from like a half an hour to an hour, depending on, um, you know, how many questions they have or things like that. Um, so usually uh, once we go and put this together, we'll go and um, set up a time to talk on a phone or um, set up a video chat. Video chat's nice because then we can go and paste it out ourselves versus mm -hmm. when, um, you know, if they're looking at it themselves, then sometimes they skip ahead and try to cheat and go and see oh, the yeah, options yeah. <laughs> that are ahead. But we like to pace it out so they see one at a time and we can really talk through it and everything like that. Yeah. Um, sometimes clients are getting very curious. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they can't like wait and they just like scroll through the whole thing and they're not listening to you. So yeah. it's definitely good if you can go and kind of control the pacing of everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So then we can also use this presentation if we want to, for example, put it in our portfolio or something. Yep. We can export this file uh, with uh, as a JPEG, right? Yep. So we have all the different JPEGs. Yeah, if you have the JPEGs, and then you have these nice mock-ups like set already. So it's nice so mm -hmm. if you have these because then you can upload them to Instagram or Behance or you mm -hmm. know different things like that. So then you can share the work that you're doing and you don't have to go out of your way to mock it up a second time. Mm -hmm. So that's always nice. And yeah, I can go and yeah. try to find a different uh, project that we were working on. Yeah, that would be to cool go and to dive see. into like a brand guidelines mm -hmm. to just kind of see like how it progresses all. Mm -hmm. All over. Let's see what we got here. Axel is saying, "Great project. Looks nice. Looks so nice. Congrats." <laughs> Thank you. You gonna put it? Watching. Be putting this one on Behance later? Yep, definitely. So you can guys, you guys can come and check it out later on. Exactly. Uh huh. Okay. So this is a company called Luminate Labs. We recently did like the packaging and brand identity for them. Um, they're like a supplement company um, where they use like herbal and natural supplements. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of times in the supplement industry, it's um, they're not tested very well. Or there's not really things to hold it up to. So he really wanted to go and um, you know put together this company that goes and does all these testings. Each one has like ten tests off of it. Um, so we designed this packaging to be clean and minimal to go and um, you know show that it's like simple um, You know what you're getting out of everything and just have clear communication And then we use these lines to kind of represent like illuminate mm -hmm. um, With like light shining in and there's ten bars in here So then that represents um, the ten different studies that they do on each of these um, um, Products Awesome. But typically we'll have a cover page that kind of has some of the um, you know brand identity on it gives a little bit of a vibe and then we'll have a Contents page, um, and this is typically set up with um, you know master pages too in InDesign. Mm -hmm. um, so the nice thing about that is we go and use character styles and paragraph styles where you can easily just go and uh, swap things out. So we'll kind of mm -hmm. use a similar template for most of our clients on here, and then you can easily swap out typefaces and things like that. Um, but yeah, like you can see here, we kind of break down the logo, the color, typography, 
um, some key elements of the brand, mm -hmm. um, and then the application, which the application comes from some of the mock-ups that we did during the oh, yeah. brand presentations. Mm -hmm. So if we walk through, we'll have divider pages throughout everything, kind of break down the logo, give a little description about how to use it, mm -hmm. um, a horizontal version, horizontal with descriptor, so they can kind of see some of the options. This one didn't have as many options as we just did for the cider because they're a little bit more, yeah. uh, you know, And always white on clean. black, black on white, both the versions, right? Yep, exactly. So they kind of have like a breakdown of everything. You know, we'll have some clear spacing so they don't go and put things too close to the logos. Typically for that, we like to go and use um, you know, a letter from within the logo. So then if, you know, depending on the scale, you can easily have something to reference yeah, to. Yeah, so you can have a proportionate, you know, yeah. Exactly. Um, we'll mm -hmm. show what not to do with it uh, because clients like to go <laughs> and dive into there. The drop shadow's a client favorite, which yep. we like to point out not to yep. go and do. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant by what not to do in exactly. the brand, brand guidelines. Which is pretty much as important, if not more important than, you yeah. know, what to do with it or what Definitely they do Definitely agree. And it makes it so much more difficult to print and to read. Exactly. It's just very um, unfortunate that people still use it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, we'll throw these restrictions in there to kind of try to keep it, you know, to a minimum and how mm -hmm. we envisioned it. We'll break down the colors. So, you know, like the colors that we chose last time through it, we'll go and put together, um, mm -hmm. you know, a little color chart and we'll like to go and show sizing. So this brand primarily uses white. So the white box is going to be the largest out of all of them and then break it down from there. Um, and we'll include CMYK colors, uh, different PMS colors, uh, so they have everything that they need to go and use. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, can send this off to a printer or a different vendor, and you know, they'll have all the information they yeah, need. Yeah, that's very important. Mm -hmm. Then we'll dive into the typography, and you can see this page looks similar. But you know, stuff yeah. that we went and used in the presentations, we can go and bring into the brand guidelines, which is nice because you're kind of you know streamlining that workflow throughout everything. Yep. Um, lay it all out like that. Adi is asking if I designed my t-shirt. No, I did not design my t-shirt, <laughs> <laughs> but I will in the future. I'm, I was planning on it. And Santaji is asking, uh, did someone say stickers? You can go on to uh, stickermule.com slash Adobe Life 19 to get 10 Sticker Mule stickers for only $1 and free shipping. So do it. if you missed the, the chat and win. All right, key elements, sounds good. Yep, and this one had different like iconography, so we'll go and lay that out and kind of show them mm. how you can use some of that. Each one was for a different one of their products, like a different skew, so we kind of kept them in the colors that they were used on. But this mm -hmm. kind of just shows them the style, and if they need to make more of them from there, then they have a good idea of, you know, what to go and use. Like this one's mm -hmm. monolined and pretty clean and minimal, so um, yeah, you can pull it out that way. Fatima is asking, when we save the presentation as JPEG, then these images will be saved separately. When we save the presentation, we save it usually as an InDesign file, right? And then uh, we can export it as JPEG or as a PDF mm -hmm. and so on. So that there you will go through uh, export. Yeah, if you go over here, you go to File, export. Yeah. Um, file, export, yeah. or command. And there you can, and there you can see, uh, you can uh, choose either PDF Mm -hmm, PDF. Or an image file, yeah, and so on. If you want to go on. to JPEG, then yeah, once you save that, it'll export yeah. it all into, um, you know, its own. And thing. in Design, I would usually always say as a, save as an InDesign file, mm -hmm, but yeah. then you can export it as whatever you like. Exactly. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> oh, no, that's all good. Yeah, so that's how you go and save it as separate JPEGs. Then yeah, it will create a folder within there, and then you'll be able to access them all pretty mm -hmm. easily. Um, yeah, and then another uh, thing that we go and use in here, these like light accents as I was discussing before that represent, you know, the 10 studies that they have and mm -hmm. illuminate. So that kind of outlines it all. Um, and then it drops into application. The fun part. Exactly. Um, so this is like the packaging that we created for it. So it kind of just outlines like all that. Um, and then some of the mock-ups, like we were saying, the business Ooh, card wow. mock-up. That's um, cool. You know, like a shipper, how you go and use that. Mm -hmm. um, Again, things that we use just in the CIDR mock-up right there. Um, you know, things that we take directly from the presentations and put right into here. Um, it really goes and just helps streamline everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a little, little web design cool. there to go and show it in. You know, the illuminate, the light, clean stuff, floating. Um, yeah. And just gives them an idea how to use the brand. I mean, this is really basic stuff. And, you know, typically we go and, you know, end up going and designing this stuff for different projects later. But, mm -hmm. you know, just in case they don't have the funds to go and do it now or they want to wait on it, then it gives them just, you know, a bit of an idea of what to go and do. 
Yeah. Well, Ron, it was so much fun. Thank yeah. you so much for being, being here. here. Thanks, Thanks to all of you guys who tuned in and check out um, Ron's Behance profile afterwards because he's going to be posting this awesome project. Yep. And then you can take a closer look, you know, um, see how, how it's being done. And yeah, thanks for all of you for sticking around and stay tuned. There will be more coming today um, with XD, the Daily Creative Challenge. And thank you so much for watching. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. with you.